Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle. And today I want to share with you five of the most common questions I get asked when I tell people my daughter has celiac disease. If you're new here, I have an eight-year-old daughter, four-year-old daughter, one and a half-year-old daughter. We are a gluten-free family of five. My four-year-old daughter has celiac disease. She was diagnosed at three. And these are responses we get from strangers, family, friends, all of them. So no particular order. Number one. So, celiac disease, is that just like a food allergy? No, there's a difference between a food allergy and celiac disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune condition. So what does that mean? It means when my daughter ingests gluten, the protein in gluten, her body recognizes it as a foreign thing. And usually with allergies, the body will attack that foreign object and cause whatever histamine release and you have some kind of swelling of the throat, itchiness, some kind of physical reaction. With an autoimmune disease, instead of attacking that foreign object, her body makes the antibodies and attacks the lining of her intestines. So it turns on itself and affects the lining of her intestines and over time it can destroy the lining of her intestines which leads to not being able to absorb the nutrients that the food she eats. So that is why it's classified as an autoimmune condition. There are different, a lot of celiacs I know when they go to restaurants or things like that, they will say they, a food allergy because honestly, a lot of people don't understand autoimmune conditions. So it's easier. So you might hear someone with celiac disease say that in those types of settings to make it easier for waiters or um, kitchen staff to understand things like that. But there is a difference. Number two, well, it's something she'll just outgrow, right? No, I think that kind of lumps into the food somewhat. People tend to think it's a food allergy because sometimes children can outgrow food allergies. But celiac disease is a autoimmune condition, but it's also genetic and you can't change genes. So one, I, and I'll put um, a graphic up here real quick to just go over some main things about celiac disease. But well, one in 133 Americans have celiac disease. It goes largely undiagnosed. It can have an array of different symptoms. So it's hard to diagnose, obviously. And my four-year-old's main symptom, I would say, before she started having more serious symptoms down the road, her first symptoms was behavioral changes. So again, it can be hard to diagnose, but she will never outgrow it she will have it her entire life. Like I said, it's genetic, so either I or my husband or both of us carry the gene, and it's interesting enough that we don't have any immediate family that we're aware of that have it, but obviously with the genetic condition, somebody has it and it's been passed down. So she will never outgrow it. Number three, so she can just have a little and be fine, right? Just like a tummy ache, no. <laughs> I think this goes, people might think maybe it, it's similar to lactose intolerance where you get just a little gassy or something, but no, it has a, like a tiny amount, a crumb size amount of gluten will cause that attack to happen on her intestines, which will cause damage to her intestines, which will cause, it does cause an array of other physical symptoms such as bloating, diarrhea, vomiting, it can cause all those, yes, but it's actually damaging the inside of your intestines, which you need to absorb your food and for just basic health. So it has long-term consequences just for being accidentally ingesting a little bit. So she cannot have any. The only There's no cure for celiac disease. The only treatment is 100% gluten-free diet. Number four, how does she get it? Like I said, it's a genetic condition, so either I, my husband, or both of us carry the gene and we passed it down. Now you can carry the celiac gene and not have celiac disease, it can lie dormant. And they've done different research about what exactly triggers that celiac disease, that gene to get turned on. And there are different factors. Obviously you need gluten in your system to trigger celiac disease, if you've never ate gluten your entire life, you've never touched it, your body wouldn't recognize it as anything, so you'd never develop celiac disease. Number two is scientists have, and now again, I will link a website I use below that I find extremely helpful and informational and accredited, so I'll um, include that link beyond celiac down in the description. But the other cause is environmental. 
So changes like pregnancy, stress, trauma to your body, injury, illness, so something that happens to your body somehow triggers that gene to be turned on. And interestingly enough, about six months before she started showing her first symptoms, she did have a more serious illness. She had a staph infection that required antibiotics. And not too long after, she did start exhibiting symptoms. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that was probably her environmental factor that switched it on. But again, it can be very different. You can have celiac disease and have no physical symptoms, but still have the intestinal damage. So again, it's very difficult to judge. I know they're currently doing research on babies who have family members with celiac disease, so they have a higher rate of getting it one day or developing it. And they look at their microbiome to see the changes that occur before celiac disease gets triggered. But again, science is looking into it. And number five, well, have you tried? Now, I'm sure most of these suggestions are out of, you know, people just trying to be nice, but we've heard a lot of different, have you tried increasing probiotics? Have you tried desensitizing? I know that's popular with food allergies where over time they're getting given a certain amount to build up a tolerance. That's not possible. Again, it's an autoimmune genetic condition. It will never go away. I had someone um, suggest from their naturopath about doing some kind of supplements to help and they claimed that their child was had a wheat intolerance and they took this supplement and after it they didn't have the wheat intolerance and again it's different it's not a food allergy it's an autoimmune condition i get all my information from my daughter's pediatric gi doctor he specializes in this and the dietitian i seek my information from medical professionals trained in it I know there's a lot of Instagram suggestions and YouTube and different things like that and there's there can unfortunately be a lot of misinformation out there so if I ever have questions or anything about my daughter's health I speak to her doctor I appreciate people trying to be helpful <laughs> but most of the time we've done our research pretty well and if we have any questions we seek information from our doctors so that is five of the most common questions we get as parents of someone who has celiac disease but I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.